Hi guys, welcome to this channel. I'm Arman. I animate 2D characters for games. I use Spine um, to animate them. And normally in this channel, you would see um, Spine animations or rigging stuff. But today I'm going to share with you Unity project and I, a little bit explanation of it. So it's not about animation. It's not about rigging. If you are looking for those topics, you can skip this video. Um, basically, this prototype just generates new character from already existing parts of other characters and combines them into new fresh looking characters by also changing the colors um, and maybe some positioning. So it's like a Frankenstein, but in a cute way, I hope. Okay, let's let's see what, what we have. First, let's see what we have in Spine. We have a character, a bird, and three skins. We have four animations, like basic animations. I'm not going into details. But um, basically what program does, it gets all the skins, it goes into the parts and takes them and reassembles into fully new character, but using these parts, obviously. So there won't uh, be a totally new looking uh, monster or bird, whatever. So we are working with parts already existing in the skins. We can add more skins, it will recognize them and add those into the library. Okay, let's see that we have also have those slots colored here. Originally images come in black and white. You can see that there is some shading there. So the bright part will be white and the little, uh, after that it will like fade out to more gray. So we, we can have shading also there, not, not pure white. Okay, uh, now let's see what we have in Unity. We have a bird. It already loads the first skin, zero named skin. And we also have our sprite sheet here. You can see that it's uh, all is in white. Oh, let me quickly run this so you can see what we are working with. Let me grab this screen here. So we have one button, we have bird that flies and stands on the stick. We can move the stick, it will follow. Everything is very simple. You can see that also eyes are following. And once it's in idle position, it can just look around. Um, we use eye constraint feature of the spine. So eyes are constraining to bone, which is moving um, along in the scene. Okay. Let's randomize it. So you can see that it randomized uh, using colors, shapes, and with only three skins, we already can randomize a lot of birds. I want you to notice that the body color remains one. It, it doesn't create like clown, like rainbow effect, coloring each wing different colors. So it recognized that this is a body part and it has to be colored in one color. So uh, wings are colored with the body in the same color, but it recognized wings as a different part. So it can bring uh, wings from other character, but color them with um, body uh, similarly. This way we will keep like a uh, skin color uh, in same category. Okay, let's see what we have next. Now let's explore what we have on scriptable object side. So we have three folders. Each of them contains the skins, uh, scriptable objects, assets. So each big, for example, it uh, indicates that it uh, comes from zero skin. It has big zero slot. It has white color and it's type of big. Uh, let's see the wings. It says it comes from zero skin, so this all manually filled while uh, creating new skins here. Uh, it says from zero skin, it comes here and it says there are two slots under the wing uh, skin. So that means that uh, if it takes the part, it will take both of the wings and not only one. Uh, we don't want like a uh, clowny character with different wings or real like Frankenstein. 
So these uh, are just configs to gather all styles and like categorize them. So a program runs through them and loads them and assigns uh, like part of them. So those are the components that are uh, the program works with. We have also uh, attachment unit. Those are basically the assets for attachment names. Like for example, you can see, let's, let's check the I. You can see that I has attachment asset for all the blinking states. And they are basically just attachments uh, and you can uh, find it directly from the skeleton. This uh, object is serialized, so it gets information from your skeleton data directly. And let's see the skin units. Skin units are, let's go uh, and see the eye and see, for example, here, eyelid has all those attachments attached here. That means that this uh, is does this works as a slot. And it again, it has uh, uh, like it reads slot name from the skeleton. This gets serialized. So this information, uh, if I export from spine with different name, you can directly see it here. here. Uh, also, you can see a new uh, property here, the color. It's like a color config. <clears throat> this actually says a program that what type of color it, it has to be colored. Like for example, it has body color. That means the eyelid will be the same color as the body. Similarly, we can go and find the tail and see that it also has a body color. These are profiles. You can we can create them. That's a basic colors. We, we establish some range. Like hue, it gets randomized value from hue, saturation and value. We can change them however we want uh, to achieve um, like very bright characters and not just dim dark. Okay, let's see what we have. Um, we have color cover this. So those are basically our skins. They are located here. Everyone, like for example, this one will. Uh, I think this is an error. Let's change it to one and everyone else should be, yeah, one. And uh, except the body, body is a different type of asset. It's like um, um, inherits from the same object, but it's body part. So it basically contains additional information about uh, where the crest, for example, here, the crest would be located. So if the body is short, let me actually show it in spine. If the body is short here, the crest will be he located here. But let's assume the body is like long. And if this body uh, get loads, it has to dictate that the crest should be here and not that here. And the position of the crest is not like uh, dictating from the crest uh, part. It, it should be should come from the body. So the body dictates where it should be. So in body uh, assets, let me go back to Unity. We have additional information, crest transform and crest. So this basically uh, reads those uh, bones. One is transform and another is uh, crest. Those are basically the name string properties, nothing spe special but they read from um, skeleton directly. So if we update skeleton, we can find them directly here. So whatever we want. So this additional information uh, helps us to look if we load the body, we will know where it has, uh, where it can contain the crest for now and later wings, etc. So this way we will have a dynamic position for the parts. Uh, let, let me actually show it in, in example. So let's assume we have long head and we, we want uh, this and this goes in one skin and we take this bone, which crest root one and move it up. Uh, these bones, the crest bone are trans, um, yeah, constrained to this bone. So, and they are basically attached to the skin. So you can see if I change the skin, this, uh, bone uh, uh, activates and it uh, the transform also transform constraint also activates for this bone and it jumps back to there 
So we are working with two set of bones for each, each of them. But if I change the skin, also the bone is jumping there. So this, uh, basically I wanted to uh, make it functional in program also, the, this setup. So for that, I would, uh, let me export this <clears throat> and come back to Unity. Let's wait it to update and let's run it. Now you can see that uh, if that particular body loads, it will uh, also dictate the position of this crest. This is not about the crest. If that body uh, gets another crest, the, the different crest also be, will be located here. You can see. So the crest doesn't know where it locates. The body dictates where it should be. So this way we get uh, very flexible about the position. Let me get it back. Yes. Okay, let's see what we have next. I think the next we can cover about sounds. I copied this code um, from internet. Uh, there was a nice talk, I think 2017, about scriptable objects. And I, I really like that. So we have bird sounds, which has all assets, sound assets, which are basically very simple scriptable object. Um, maybe not that simple. So they, they have uh, clips attached here and they randomly pick any, any of them and with those range, they just uh, make that sound. So this is just to randomize the effect. If we, if we hit preview, we can hear directly the sound gets randomized in this range. So it's, it's very powerful tool. Again, um, very useful when we use uh, scriptable objects. Okay, let's see what comes next. You know, I think I explained what I wanted to explain. I'm not going into more details in code, especially. I don't think of me as a good coder. So you think of this uh, project as uh, like exploration and uh, exploration of the idea of generating new stuff and not just how to write uh, write code. So uh, I will leave you here. I will also leave the project. You can download it, a project of the Unity, project of the Spine. You can do whatever you want. The art is mine, so no problems are there. And if you have any suggestion of how we could go and develop this idea, I would be happy to hear about that. Also, if you think that this is uh, like too far, like you don't want to see this kind of content in this channel, let me know about it in the comments. Uh, also, I will create a poll a little bit later to understand um, that cumulative feedback of you guys. It's really important for me to grow uh, this channel. Also, I don't want you to, I don't want to lose any of you because I really value this community. I want to be helpful for all of you. Okay, that was it. Um, I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something and I hope it was not boring for you animators if you stayed uh, for long here. And um, see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.